Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome back to the Codex. In this video, we're continuing our project, Handwritten Digit Recognition with Python. And in this video, we're gonna apply our logistic regression model on our data. But first thing first, what is logistic regression? Well, in layman terms, logistic regression is simply a function that we apply on our data to look at a binary format, did this succeed or did it not? And kind of in a binary dependent variable, of success or failure one or zero. So in the last Python project we built, we used a concept known as linear regression, where we took some data and we modeled a straight line on the data and then created that function, y equals mx plus b, passed in a value for x, and we got a value y back. So linear regression works by fitting a model so that you can determine the actual value of y given a value of x. However, logistic regression is a bit different. Logistic regression is all about getting that binary value zero or one based on a variable passed in. So we have a dependent variable for in this case, test passed. And that test passed variable is the value is gained from another variable, our study. Based on the our study, did a student pass the test or not? And in this case, we can map the values out to based on the number of hours studied, the test was either passed, so one, or the test was not passed and the value here is zero. So logistic regression is modeling the probability of observing a success. This line that you see over here, the sigmoid line or the S curve is a logistic function that is mapping essentially what is the probability given the number of hours studied that the person passed the test. And in this case, that probability ranges from zero to one. In the case of linear regression, linear regression could go anywhere from negative infinity to positive infinity. If someone maybe studied 200 hours, this line would extend all the way across and we would get some outrageous number such as 10 or 20 or 30. But in the case of logistic regression, we're estimating, did this person kind of pass based on a binary relationship? Either that person passed or they didn't. So for example, let's take a look at the number four. We pass in the variable four to our logistic regression model. This person studied four hours. Our logistic regression model would return the value 0 0.704. What does this actually mean? Here at x equals four, the value is 0 0.704, but the observation that we wanna make here is that this person has a 70% chance of passing the test. It's not saying that the actual value is 0 0.704. The model should only output or the outcome should only be zero or one. And so taking into account this percentage that there's a 70% likelihood of the person passing 70% of the time, we would say that, oh, the output here is one and we would want this person or we would say that, okay, this person is very likely to pass. It has a high likelihood of passing. So in logistic regression, all we're trying to do is map the input variables to a binary format zero or one. That is the simplest form of logistic regression. Now in the kind of terms of our numbers, it gets a bit different. The format of logistic regression we're using is something called multinomial logistic regression. And what's happening here is we're applying logistic regression on each one of these output labels. So we're saying, okay, given an array of 784 different digits, is this gonna be a zero or not a zero? Is this one or not a one? Is this two or not a two? And going off of this value over here, we're checking to see, okay, based on this black and white, zero, not zero, one, not one, two, not two, what is, which number or which logistic function is giving me the highest likelihood that it is one of those given numbers. And based off of that, we return that specific number. So imagine running 10 different logistic regression functions, each for its own number saying, is it zero, not zero, is it one, not one, and then maxing out off of those which one provides me the highest likelihood that it is this number. That is essentially what's happening in our logistic regression model of classifying or selecting which number this is gonna be. Doing that in sklearn is two lines of code. All we have to do here is specify two things. We need to create our model with a solver. MDL is equal to logistic regression that we imported above, specifying a solver here to be LBFGS. And this solver is the limited memory Broden Fletcher Goldfarb Shannon algorithm. It's a bit complicated. There is a lot of math that's going on. 
If you're interested, definitely check it out. But this is one of the ways that we can optimize and create the logistic regression function using this solver. After we have this model, we're gonna go ahead and fit our data. So we're gonna say over here, mdl.fit, and we're gonna pass in our train, sorry, our x underscore train, y underscore train, and then once we fit the data, our next step is to predict the data. So we're gonna say over here, predictions is equal to model.predict, pass in our x test. So over here, x underscore test, and then let me capitalize that. And then once we have our predictions, the last step that we wanna do is check our score. How is our algorithm performing? So score is equal to mdl.score, and we're gonna pass in over here our test data set. So x underscore test, y underscore test, and let's print out our score. So it's gonna run all of that, and we're gonna get the value here around 91 or 92%. That's roughly what I've seen running these in past iterations. And right over here, we get 92% accuracy. So the score here is defined as the number of kind of correct samples you got over all total samples. And so 92% of the time, our logistic regression model correctly labels the input number given. And if you get this error, number of total iterations reached, don't worry about it. This just means that our logistic regression solver, LBFGS, did not converge in the given number of max iterations, which in this case is 100. If you wanna go ahead and play around with that, you can specify the max iter in the logistic regression function to change that. Anyways, fantastic job. We just viewed our score and we saw that we've created a successful algorithm. In the next video, let's visualize what every digit and the corresponding prediction looks like. And then finally, create a confusion matrix to understand how our logistic regression model is performing across all the labels. Thanks so much for listening and I'll see you in the next video.